Um, ready to go. Thank you. Um, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that the place that we meet today belongs rightfully to our First Nations people. Um, here is the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. May we pay our respects to our Elders past, present, emerging. And this beautiful work is by Leanne Coburn and I thought it would accompany this role. So a bit about me. Um, I consider myself an emerging creative producer with a curatorial focus both inspired um, and inflected by a background in theatre and performance studies and particularly the intersection of social practice, community engagement and community arts culture development practice, which Rachel's just outlined a bit. So I've always had uh, two steady streams throughout my life, um, one orientated towards creativity and performance and another um, dedicated to leadership roles and sort of social justice. Uh, I actually, fun fact, I held uh, leadership positions every year of, um, from year five in primary school to fourth year uni. That's, sorry, that's a gross explainer brag, but it sort of explains how I kind of came to where I am. Um, to define community arts cultural development, because I keep using that term, uh, it's a pedagogy that's defined as encompassing collaborations between professional artists and communities based solely on that particular community's desire to achieve artistic and social outcomes. And just to quickly introduce a company that I work with, um, Milk Creek Theatre, uh, based in Alexandria, work with uh, an ensemble who have a lived experience of homelessness, of sometimes uh, mental health and trauma support needs, drug addiction, just experiences of social marginalisation. And I've worked with them for six years now. And I suppose this slide is supposed to speak to my own uh, artistic practice, which is somewhat limited, um, as with a background originally in theatre making, um, devising dramaturgy and performance art. My curatorial style um, has therefore kind of reflected an, ex an exploration of the physical form, um, a focus on narrative and always emphasising the artist's voice message. To introduce art as a powerful means of communication, I've chosen two favourites. Um, Brazilian artist carved a thousand figures out of ice, placed them in a central square in Berlin, they melted within half an hour. Uh, a French sculptor has an ongoing project with uh, 1,600 paper mache pandas. The photos are taken of them all around the world. That was the previous slide. Um, the sad thing about that is that is actually the amount of pandas left in the wild. It's actually 1,596. So what I want to say is although participatory art is often seen as idealistic with uh, limited potential for affecting social change, my experience lately is that the physical and um, applied nature of contemporary arts projects and communities that do address health and systemic issues of well-being invite our participation in an urgent and personalised way. Um, not only can these engaged artistic practices generate immediate affect and empathy between people, they also present new ways of relating personal wellness to broader social and cultural values. So now I'm behind that previous slide was a bit of an about antidote, which is the organisation that I founded and am artistic director of. These two prints were from our first show called Anthropocene. I'm going to skip through that. Um, from a group show called Moving Nations, this work by Justine Yusuf was called Another, Another's Word, which serves to develop her inquiry into the identity politics of communities within the diaspora. Um, in the gallery, she created Rosewater um, using the same recipe as her grandmother, but instead of using a traditional Damascus rose, she used a David Austin rose. Um, our next group show, Engender, brought together seven artists whose work engages with gender and sexuality through the lenses of feminist, queer, trans and anti-racial subjectivities. It included Tony Albert, Angelica Nassidi, Liam Benson and Echo Morgan, who was featured in the last slide. So this is around the time when the Opera House announced their new festival called Antidote. Um, and I will note here how important this period was as a learning lesson in being pragmatic, um, developing relationships and taking opportunities as they come. Because my antidote organisation had already got to the name, um, I was brought into the throw of the Talks and Ideas team to work out our potential place. Um, and since then we've become sort of a visual arts consultant of sorts for the festival. Last year we showed Dr Christian Thompson's 2017 series Lake Dolly, which was a previous slide. This year, uh, Kavita Vitana Jankun with the beautiful um, colourful works you just saw. As part of an extended exhibition series um, earlier this year that I co-curated with James Nguyen, who 
also has a beautiful work over there. Um, we held a group show called The Trace and also commissioned artist Jason Fu to create a video installation work that was inspired by ideas of traces being passed down through time. So he created this really beautiful work um, at Alaska Projects called The Fruit Was Sweeter Than, The Fish Were More Plentiful, which really encapsulated familial ties and experience of diaspora that can penetrate intergenerationally. Um, and I was really inspired by this process of collaboration. And in that kind of headspace, it occurred to me um, how introspectively I think that I had been working. So this ultimately led to the idea of creating an advisory committee for Antidote, which we've just done. Um, I think the importance of this committee stems from a general observation and consensus about the art community broadly. Though there are many working to diversify, the systemic issue we face is that everything works from a basis of white, Anglo-Saxon and Eurocentric. So all that is left becomes labelled as other or marginalised, which is just not the case. My aim with Antwerp programming is to rethink and hopefully change our definitions of diversity, not just as quotas to fill, but through the act of exploring alternative narratives and accepting the notion of the multiplicity of experiences inherent in our society. So, I think my conclusion, or the hopeful takeaway here, is to think more broadly about the efficacy of art in addressing social justice issues um, and the importance of really pushing a systemic shift towards person-first narratives and hopefully um, respect of differences. Yes! <laughs>